So guys, when I switched to VR headsets that have hand controllers, it completely changed my experience and I am never going back to the low end vibes, like never. So I thought, let me do a video that talks about how these work and you know why you should actually invest in a good headset that have hand controllers. So what makes hand controllers special in a nutshell is that they can detect your hand and your finger movements. So this is why you're able to, you know, grab things, you're able to wave at a person, you're able to shake a person's hand. I mean, at the metaverse, usually, you know, when you meet someone, you'll usually, if you want to get their attention, you would usually, you know, wave. So then you know that you can go to them if you want to engage with them and talk to them. And also, you know, you can shake their hand. So that's, you know, pretty much what what these bed boards can allow you to do so it feels a little bit more realistic so how does it all work so basically hand controllers have a tracking system and in order to have a very immersed experience your tracking your hand controller has to have really good um, tracking precision and also haptic feedback actually because haptic feedback gives you that physical sensation so you feel like if you're touching something you feel like actually you're touching it um, for people who do have issues with that you can reduce the intensity um, of that haptic feedback but essentially you know if you want to have a more realistic um, experience you know there's no need to reduce it because then you do feel like you're touching something um, yeah so but what's important is that in order to get the position of the controller, you do need a hand, <laughs> you do need a, a, a VR headset with cameras in order to be, basically be able to see where the position of the controller is. So guys, I'm going to use the spot scramble game as a indication of how powerful it is having VR hand controllers um, in order to feel uh, more immersed and be able to you know play these games in a more realistic way um, or even you know inside certain applications being able to move around in a more realistic way so I'm gonna go to the options menu and as you can see you can select the grab button that you want um, currently the default is on the index finger which is the one that needs to sit on this button here um, then there's the middle finger that you can use if you feel more comfortable with the middle finger. I, I like the index finger, so I'll keep it there. Then from a selector point of view, you can either use the pointer, which is what I'm currently using, or you can decide to use this hand. Um, as you can see, pink for, for right, blue for left. And for you to actually uh, select a button, it just extends out. See? Just extends out but I don't like this because if your boundary wall and I wonder if you okay if you can see this but if your boundary wall is small um, or short rather then you sort of like go outside of your um, your boundary so I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna switch back to the pointer the pointer is great because I can point as far as I want without having to go outside the boundary so let me see if I'm still centered. Yep, still looking good. So now let's go into the game so we can see how we can use up, utilize the grab and selecting option. So I'm gonna do bowling because bowling is bowling rather <laughs> is will give a nice example of um, how to grab items or it sort of like helps you really to teach you how to grab the items. So this is how the bowling bowling arcade looks like um there is the audience cheering i don't even know if they're cheering me on or if they're cheering on that guy over there who is the cpu that i'm playing against um so yeah i've got the audio off so that um i can speak but now let me switch it let me increase the volume and let's do this so i grab and oh, that was a whack throw. Made some truth. Ooh, okay. Yay, a thousand, so that was a I mean I don't know how you're supposed to play bowling with the basketball, but anyways. So yeah, all I'm doing is using my index 
finger grabbing and I am releasing. <laughs> Ooh, let's see how the cheese will perform. Oh, there you go. Nice. I mean, he's at 4.8 and I'm on 1.6. Hopeless. Anyways, what's the best way to throw this? I don't play rugby or was it football in America? Let's see. Okay, no, not it. Wait, what is this? What is it? What is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. Obviously, I lost. So, yeah. Back to the video. The two most common trekking systems are lighthouse trekking as well as inside out trekking. I don't know much about the lighthouse trekking, but I know that it's used, you know, for your high end valve as well as your HTC. And you need like a, I think a, at least two base stations, which can, you know, check the, um, the reference point of your, your headset and um, the controller. But that's all of that I know. Until I buy one of those, I'll be able to know to speak a little bit more about. Inside out tracking, on the other hand, is, you know, what I've experienced with your Oculus Quest 2. So how this works is that you actually have a set of infrared LED um, LEDs around the ring and your headset would then be taking an image of, you know, um, the LEDs and using that to basically get the, the, um, the position of your controllers. So based on the images that the headset is taking, the um, tracking system is unable to triangulate the position of the controllers. So this is why you shouldn't, or rather the headset is not able to track your controllers if you're like, you know, you're, you're, the controller is behind you because um, the cameras need to be able to see at all times where the controllers are. So next time when you're having an issue, you know, with your tracking precision, um, for instance, you've got your controller here, but then, you know, the headset is showing the hand is all the way outside. Um, just check your, your, your headset, you know, you might just need to clean um, the cameras and also check that it's not obstructed in any ways. But the nice thing is that, you know, these headsets do have a way of helping you on how to, you know, reset and reboot your, your controllers. Another thing to consider is lighting. So one time I actually decided, okay, let me go into the metaverse. And then I didn't switch on the lights. Well, I had my lights very dimmed and I started having issues with the controllers. Like it, it just looked very weird. Um, it, and I didn't understand why up until I switched on the lights and I decided to, to, to stand up and it was working properly. So then when I went to sit down and then it continued working properly and I'm like, oh, okay. I think the factor that changed here is the fact that, you know, the lights are actually, um, we're actually dimmed and now they're brighter. Um, I know that some people say that, you know, if you've got LEDs around the light, around the house, that might, um, uh, interfere with you know the, the the headset being able to track to track your LED, your hand controller LEDs so you might need to switch off um, the other LED lights around the house another thing actually when it comes to controllers is that you do have um, batteries inside here they use um, double A AA batteries and ideally you want to have um, rechargeable batteries and um, you can actually get a charging dock which can charge your hand controllers and the um, headset at the same time. Um, I'll, I'm going to put up an image here of, of, of Anchor, um, I think it's called Anchor uh, Charging Dock. Um, luckily it's being certified by Oculus so you shouldn't be having any issues there. So yeah, um, you can basically save up a lot by not having to buy new batteries all the time. Um, however, I must say that the Oculus um, batteries are actually like insane. I've had them for a very, very long time and I haven't had to change them. Um, what I have noticed though is that, you know, because I am right-handed, the right-hand um, battery power is uh, depleting much faster than the left-hand one, which makes sense because I'm using that 
a little bit more right um yeah but th th those are things that you should be considering um or rather that you should know uh, about hand controllers so guys that's all i have to say today about you know um vr hand controllers so at least now you know how they work and what to expect and also you know the fact that you know consider your environment in terms of you know um having like proper tracking precision but yeah, um, I will put up, if in South Africa, I'll put up, you know, where you can get them um, in South Africa. But, you know, Amazon is my go-to, you know, when it comes to those things. I do find that, you know, our local um, suppliers are a little bit more expensive. And I think it's because of, you know, the, um, the shipment and they also want to make a profit out of it. Um, but yeah, guys, have a good one. Until the next video. Ciao.